officially charged with sexual battery. Blackley County Sheriff Chris Cootie is accused of groping the prominent Judge Hatchet at a sheriff's convention earlier this year. Well, now a man who witnessed the incident is speaking exclusively to Channel 2 Cobb County Bureau Chief Michelle Newell. Michelle is live in Marietta outside the courthouse. Michelle. Yeah, Brown told me not only did he witness this, but he says he had to physically intervene. Okay. I was angry, and uh, my first reaction was was to do a little more than just take my take his hand off of her. Former DeKalb County Sheriff Thomas Brown sat down with us to talk about the day he says Blackley County Sheriff Chris Cootie groped the prominent judge Glenda Hatchet. She was as my guest. I was I was upset. I was mad. Um, was obviously intoxicated. The alleged incident happened at a sheriff's conference in Cobb County earlier this year. Brown says he was introducing Judge Hatchet to the sheriffs at the Renaissance Atlanta Waverly Bar. Three sheriffs came over to the, to the stand-up table. Sheriff Cooney being one, uh, the president of the Georgia Sheriff's Association being the other, and then there was one other sheriff. Brown says he turned his head away from Sheriff Cootie and Judge Hatchet as they were talking. As I turned to my left to focus back on the two of them, uh, I saw his hand go down on her left breast. I grabbed his arm, threw it off of her chest, and basically say, what are you, adjective, think you're doing? Basically, where it ended. Brown says he immediately removed Judge Hatchet from the room. The next morning, Brown says he had a stern conversation with Sheriff Cootie, who was later charged with sexual battery. She's very passionate about uh, telling her story at some point in time, if for no other reason for uh, the hundreds of young ladies out there who may have been no, victims no, of no. some type of sex. No and no. Absolutely not ladies this is not the type of date that you want he sees you get sexually assaulted and he removes you from the the scene you're the problem I, look how old he is Look how old this man is. Look how old Judge Hatchet is. And she's a judge. She's dating down. I just, I, uh, I don't know what to say. She wants to tell her story to warn all the other young ladies who's been sexually assaulted. The real question is, why did this particular white sheriff feel okay to do this in front of you? And everybody else that was there. Why was there even a next day, you understand, to this? Nothing was handled right there and they all were sheriffs. Everybody standing right there. And she is known in that county. She is known globally. Judge Hatchet. To assault saying anything because they're afraid to do so we tried contacting sheriff cootie I the thing about no no it's not because women are afraid to do so it is because something like this a room full of people that are well capable and well within their means and rights to address the issue properly. And if it's not going to happen for her, a judge, who is it going to happen for? 
Nobody's afraid. They know they're not going to get any justice. Nothing is going to happen. You're going to blame the victim like how you remove the judge from the area instead of removing him. Now, if this happens to a judge in a room full of sheriffs, this, this should be all over everywhere, but again, it happened to a black woman, okay? It doesn't matter what your job or your position is. You're still, in this world, just a black woman. No matter how amazing you are, no matter how much money you have made more than everybody in that room added up and put together, no matter how many national shows you have had of your own, no matter the school, no matter the education, you're still just treated this way removable from a scene that you have been invited to first of all and then victimized and then treated like the criminal the stain that needs to be removed from the good old boy's good time this is michelle Newell. WSB TV. Can I speak with Sheriff Cootie? We were told he wasn't available, but in a previous statement released after Sheriff Cootie turned himself in, Sheriff Cootie said he takes the charges seriously and will comply with all legal obligations placed upon him. I'm a key witness, and uh, and I want the judicial system to be respected. And Why don't you want this woman to be respected? <laughs> So at some point in time, you know, I may have to say something in court. Um, but, um, you know, I felt like I needed to say something because, you know, the accusation is, is now out and uh, uh, it's unsealed. Contacted the Georgia Sheriff's Association. A representative told me the board has not met since the alleged incident happened, but they plan on meeting next month and they will discuss. The now, Judge Hatchet is 70 years old. 70 years old, okay? And she was a star of a syndicated show, Judge Hatchet, which ran from 2000 to 2008. Since 2016, she has starred in a new courtroom show, The Verdict, with Judge Hatchet. Now, Judge Hatchet was born May 31st, 1951 in Atlanta, Georgia. She's from Atlanta. Okay? She has two sons, Charles and Christopher. She's written many books. She went to Emory University, Emory University of Law, and Mount Holyoke College. Now, her outstanding contributions were recognized by Ebony Magazine, excuse me, which named Judge Hatchet one of the 100 best and brightest black women in corporate America in 1990 after an extensive career at Delta Airlines, okay? And she was the highest ranking woman of color worldwide serving both as senior attorney and public relations manager. As senior attorney, Hatchet litigated cases in federal courts throughout the country. And as manager of public relations, she supervised global crisis management and media relations for all of Europe, Asia, and the United States. Now, in 1990, Judge Hatchett made the difficult decision to leave Delta Airlines in order to accept an appointment. That's right, she was handpicked as Chief Presiding Judge of Fulton County, Georgia Juvenile Court. Upon accepting the position, uh, Judge Hatchett 
Glenda Hatchett, that is, became Georgia's first African-American chief presiding judge of a state court and the department head of one of the largest juvenile court systems in the country. Joe Biden's not talking about this issue, is he? Hmm, let's continue. Now listen, what I'm saying is that she is the business in Georgia's uh, court system, okay? She's been the first black on several different boards. She's been um, world-renowned, recognized by national mag magazines. She's, I don't know why I keep saying magazines, but <laughs> magazines. Now, in 2000, Hatchett left Fulton County and began presiding over the national syndicate, nationally syndicated television show, Judge Hatchett, which taped regular episodes for eight seasons. The Judge Hatchett show was nominated for two Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Legal Courtroom Program in 2008 and 2009. and 2004, Judge Hatchett authored the best national seller or national bestseller, Say What You Mean, Mean What You Say. And now she is uh, currently running in its sixth year of national syndication which was uh, Judge Hatchett, right? But she left that particular show at that particular time, and then she went on to the best of Judge Hatchett, which uh, was airing on We TV Network, okay? She launched her own firm, The Hatchett Firm, a national law firm that focuses on catastrophic personal injury, medical malpractice, and class action lawsuits. In addition to practicing law, Judge Hashi is a motivational speaker and speaks at conferences and events all across the United States. In 2013, she was the opening keynote speaker at the Pennsylvania Conference for Women, 10th anniversary, where Hillary Clinton gave the closing speech. She is the only speaker in the conference's 10 year history to be invited to speak more than once. In 2015, she delivered the Holmes Hunter Lecture at University of Georgia, honoring Charlene Hunter Galt and the late Hamilton Holmes, who in 1961 became the first African American students to enroll at UGA University of Georgia. She's appeared on over a dozen shows, including CNN, The View, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Monique Show, shout out to Monique in Baltimore, and The Young and the Restless, okay? Now in April 2015, Judge Hatchett announced that she signed on to return to television with a new court show. The verdict with Hat Judge Hatchet, okay, set to air previously in fall 2016, okay. So you you get it, right? You get it. Now, as uh, recently reported some years ago, okay, by Black Enterprise, Hatchet's son Charles Johnson. Is suing Cedar Sinai Medical Center because he believes that his wife bled to death in 2016 due to a culture of racism at the renowned Los Angeles Hospital. So they done killed this woman's son's wife. <sighs> All because you're black. All because you need to be humiliated in public. All because you don't deserve. You understand? So when black women are telling you that these things are going on and you take the offense, well, it happens to men too. Like you somebody I can't deal with. I don't even want to talk to you about nothing. Because you're not interested. You're weak and powerless. Hatching and her son... 
have been outspoken about the nightmare they experienced after J Johnson's wife, Kara Dixon Johnson, died about 12 hours after having their son Langston via a scheduled C-section. So they knew she was coming. They set everything up. This wasn't a surprise. And they said that the C-section was performed in 17 minutes at a press conference outside of Cedars Sinai. Johnson said, there's no doubt in my mind that my wife will be here today and be here Sunday celebrating Mother's Day with her boys if she was a Caucasian woman. And of course, the hospital is fighting the suit. So nobody cares that this woman is world renowned. She is prestigious. She has been the CEO of several companies. She also has created companies. All of those sheriffs knew who she was or should have known. And it wasn't about, oh, just, you know, sexual gratification. No, it's all about humiliation. It is a ritual with these people. It is about power and enforcing it because he was an elected official. And she's just a black woman. They just wanted to embarrass the white man whose arm she was there on that night. You're going to say probably he's been thrown into power with black people. But you know what's up with him. He did not use his power to do anything to that man. He instead addressed the issue by removing her from the situation. Get in the comments. Oh, get in the comments. This is Nikki Justice. We can't go to the doctors. We can't go to the hospital. When we go to the hospital, they think that we're not feeling the pain. That We're telling them we're feeling pain, but because we're not reacting in a certain way, and just because we're black. A doctor went to the hospital and asked for pain medicine, and the doctor said, I don't feel comfortable giving you pain medicine. Insinuating that she was a drug addict, and she died. So when you hear, all my life I had to fight, it's not a joke, it's not a game. You say, oh, well, a black woman has a prestigious position and things of this nature, and she should have been protected. That's one place she should have felt protected. The man who invited her there should have shown her more protection, but he did not. He showed her reflection and deflection. And I think he assisted in aiding and abetting a criminal, just as everyone in that room did, because everyone in that room had power to rectify the situation. I think a close hand contact with, a re with his jaw would have rectified the situation, at least a Will Smith. At least. How can a black woman defend herself, a 70-year-old woman? She's 70. No one did anything. And then they were looking for him for three weeks. Oh, he's on a religious retreat. Three weeks. They said that this was under investigation for three weeks. 